I know what he said was it's not that serious. Just inject a little bleach in your arm. You'll be all right. The economy collapsed. There were no jobs. Unemployment rate rose to 15%. It was terrible. And so what we had to do is try to put things back together again. And that's exactly what we began to do. We created 15,000 new jobs. <clears throat> we brought out in a, a position where we have 800,000 new manufacturing jobs. But there's more to be done. There's more to be done. Working class people are still in trouble. I come from Scranton, Pennsylvania. I come from a household where the kitchen table, if the things weren't able to be met during the month, it was a, pr a problem. Price of eggs, the price of gas, the price of housing, the price of a whole range of things. That's why I'm working so hard to make sure I deal with those problems. And we're going to make sure that we reduce the price of housing. We're going to make sure we build two, two million new units. We're going to make sure we cap rents so corporate greed can't take over. The combination that I was left with in corporate greed is the reason why we're in this problem right now. In addition to that, we're in a situation where if you had to take a look at all that was done in his administration, he didn't do much at all. By the time he left, there were things that were in chaos, literally chaos. And so we put things back together, we created, I said, those jobs, we make sure we have a situation where we now, we brought down the price of prescription drugs, which is a major issue for many people. It's to $15 for, for uh, an insulin shot, as opposed to $400. No senior has yeah. to pay more than $200 for any drug, all the drugs they can include beginning next year. In a situation that we're going to make that available to everybody, to all Americans. So we're working to bring down the price around the kitchen table, and that's what we're going to get done. Thank you. President Trump? We have the greatest economy in the history of our country. Uh, we have never done so well. Every, everybody was amazed by it. Other countries were copying us. We got hit with COVID, and when we did, we spent the money necessary so we wouldn't end up in a Great Depression, the likes of which we had in 1929 by the time we finished, so we did a great job. We got a lot of credit for the economy, a lot of credit for the military, and no wars, and so many other things. Everything was rocking good. But the thing we never got the credit for, and we should have, is getting us out of that COVID mess. Uh, he created mandates that was a disaster for our country, but other than that, we had we had given them back a, a country where the stock market actually was higher than pre-COVID, and nobody thought that was even possible. Uh, the only jobs he created are for illegal immigrants and bounce back jobs, a bounce back from the COVID. He has not done a good job. He's done a poor job and inflation's killing our country. It is absolutely killing us. Thank you. President Biden. Well, look, the greatest economy in the world. He, he's the only one who thinks that, I think. I don't know anybody else who thinks that we have the greatest economy in the world. And, you know, the fact of the matter is that uh, we found ourselves in a situation where his, his economy is way too wealthy. He has the largest tax cut in American history, $2 trillion. He's he raised a deficit out. larger than any president has in any one term. He's the only president other than Herbert Hoover who's had lost more jobs than he had when he began, since Herbert Hoover. The idea that he did something that was significant in the military. And then look at you know, him looking down. When he was president, they were still killing people in Afghanistan. He didn't do anything about that. When he was president, we were still finding so ourselves in a position where again. you had a notion that we were this He's safe country. No. Truth is, I'm the only president this century that doesn't have any, this this decade, that none of any troops dying anywhere in the world like he did. Uh, president Trump, uh, I want to follow up if I can. You Am want I allowed to, to respond to him? Well, I'm going to ask you a follow up. You can do whatever you want with the minute that we give you. Um, I, I want to follow up. You, you want to impose a 10% tariff on all goods coming into the U.S. How will you ensure that that doesn't drive prices even higher? It's not going to drive them higher. It's just going to cause countries that have been ripping us off for years, like China and many others, in all fairness to China. It's going to just force them to pay us a lot of money, reduce our deficit tremendously, and give us a lot of power for other things. But he, would, he made a statement. The only thing he was right about is I gave you the largest tax cut in history. I also gave you the largest regulation cut in history. That's why we had all the jobs. And the jobs went down, and then they bounced back. And he's taking credit for bounce back jobs. He can't do that. He also said... He inherited 9% inflation. He, no, he inherited right almost now. no inflation, and it stayed that way for 14 months, and then it blew up under his leadership because What's they spent money on? like a bunch of people that didn't know what they were doing, and they don't know what they were doing. It was the worst, probably the worst administration in history. There's never been. And as far as Afghanistan is concerned, I was getting out of Afghanistan, but we were getting out with dignity, with strength, with power. He got out. It was the most embarrassing day in the history of our country's life. 
President Trump, over the last eight years, under both of your administrations, the national debt soared to record highs. And according to a new nonpartisan analysis, President Trump, your administration approved $8.4 trillion in new debt. Well, so far, President Biden, you've approved $4.3 trillion in new debt. So former President Trump, many of the tax cuts that you signed into law are set to expire next year. You want to extend them and go even further, you say. With the U.S. facing trillion dollar deficits and record debt, why should top earners and corporations pay even less in taxes than they do now? Because the tax cuts spurred the greatest economy that we've ever seen just prior to COVID and even after COVID. It was so strong that we were able to get through COVID much better than just about any other country. But we spurred, that tax spurred. Now, when we cut the taxes, as an example, the uh, corporate tax was cut down to 21% from 39% plus beyond that. Uh, we took in more revenue with much less tax and companies were bringing back trillions of dollars back into our country. The country was going like never before. And we were ready to start paying down debt. We were ready to start using the liquid gold right under our feet, the oil and gas right under our feet. We were going to have something that nobody else has had. We got hit with COVID. We did a lot to fix it. I gave him an unbelievable situation with all of the therapeutics and all of the things that we came up with. We, we gave him something great. Remember, more people died under his administration, even though we had largely fixed it. More people died under his administration than our administration, and we were right in the middle of it, something which a lot of people don't like to talk about. But he had far more people dying in his administration. He did the mandate, which is a disaster, mandating it. When the vaccine went out, he did a mandate on the vaccine, which is the thing that people most objected to about the vaccine. And he did a very poor job, just a very poor job. And I will tell you, not only poor there, but throughout the entire world, we're no longer respected as a country. They don't respect our leadership. They don't respect the United States anymore. We're like a third world nation between weaponization of his election, trying to go after his political opponent, all of the things he's done, we've become like a third world nation. And it's a shame. The damage he's done to our country, and I'd love to ask him and Will why he allowed millions of people to come in here from prisons, jails, and mental institutions to come into our country and destroy our country. President Trump, we will get to immigration uh, later in this block. President Biden, uh, I want to give you an opportunity to respond to this question about the national debt. He had the largest national debt of any president in four year period, number one. Number two, he got two trillion dollar tax cut benefited the very wealthy. What I'm going to do is fix the tax system. For example, we have a thousand trillionaires in America, I mean billionaires in America. And what's happening? They're in a situation where they, in fact, pay 8.2 percent in taxes. If they just paid 24 percent, 25 percent, either one of those numbers, they'd raise 500 million dollars, billion dollars, I should say, in a 10-year period. We'd be able to right wipe out his debt. We'd be able to help make sure that all those things we need to do, child care, elder care, making sure that we continue to strengthen our health care system, making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person eligible for what I've been able to do with the, uh, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to I do with. Uh, look, if See? we finally beat Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden. We President finally Trump. beat Medicare. Oh, he's right. He did beat Medicare. He beat it to death, and he's destroying Medicare <laughs> because all of these people are coming in. They're putting well, them on they Medicare. They're them putting them on Social Security. Yeah, They're going to destroy Social Medicare, Security. This you, man is going to single-handedly destroy Social Security. These millions and millions of people coming in, they tried to put them on Social Security. He will wipe out Social Security. He will wipe out Medicare. So he was right in the way he finished that sentence, and it's a shame. What's happened to our country in the last four years is not to be believed. Foreign countries, I'm friends with a lot of people, they cannot believe what happened to the United States of America. We're no longer respected. They, they don't like us. We give them everything they want and they, they think we're stupid. They think we're very stupid people. What we're doing for other countries and they do nothing for us. What this man has done is absolutely criminal.